I was born and raised in a Christian family. My father was the pastor of a church. My mother, a beautiful singer within the choir. From a very young age, I've been nurtured by the names of the prophets, from Abraham and his sons to Noah upon his ship, Moses with his remarkable courage to guide his people to safety. It was from this very young age that I was met with a burning desire to follow in my father's footsteps, to become a religious leader. And so, I dedicated myself to this cause, and I soon acquired a platform upon which I could share my passion for God and what I then believed his untainted revelation. As I reached my mid-twenties, I was met with a position within the church where I could share all this, where I could be a youth leader for my church itself. And as my independence grew, religious freedom took hold, I started asking questions to my religious leaders which were often left unanswered. It was during this time that my mother also started reading more regarding Islam, and she eventually embraced Islam. What happened upon her journey is that she wanted to write an article for a local magazine regarding Hajj. Now, during this time as a youth leader and a Christian missionary, I contested her quest for additional knowledge, and we often debated with one another, in love, in compassion. She is still my mommy. But I still remember during this time that whenever we would have youth group and we would do praise and worship in our house, I would turn up the music just a little bit, lo a little bit louder to try and call it back to Christianity. Now, it was during this time where I realized that my desire to follow in my father's footsteps to become a religious leader within the church was starting to wither apart. And I decided to work abroad for Royal Caribbean Cruises as a photographer and marketing and sales. And it was at the airport where my mom held me in a close embracing hug. And she prayed a prayer over me, which I will never forget. She prayed a prayer to a new God, Allah, whom I did not know back then. She prayed to this Allah to send a very big angel with me to guide and to protect me upon my journey. And so, I left for my flight, and I landed in Australia, and I got onto my ship, and I opened up my bag, and I realized that my mommy had left me with more than just a prayer. She left me with a copy of the Holy Quran. And it's on the very first page of this book that she wrote a little note, and she said that, if ever I want to debate against Muslims one day, I need to understand what they believe. I need to know where they come from. What is their history? And so that makes sense to me. And with the love that I have for my mom within my heart, I dedicated myself to reading at least one page every evening. One page soon then turned to two, two into three, and I found myself completing the Quran from cover to cover. This is, brothers and sisters, where my spiritual battle began. A battle which left my heart and my mind and my soul torn. I was separated countries between myself and everything that I held there, and yet I knew I was exactly where I had to be. I felt betrayed by my religious leaders who did not educate me regarding Islam, and yet I knew that there was still something that was guiding me. I felt as if I did not really know this God, and yet I knew that He was right there beside me. And so I dedicated myself to start a comparative study between the Holy Quran, the Torah, and the Gospels. And what I had found truly astonished me that there's more cohesion between these revelations than what there is separation from the very core principle within the Holy Quran found in Surah Iqlas. This is echoed within the Bible. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4, when Moses, peace be upon him, says, Here are Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. Confirmed by Jesus, peace be upon him, as to that which came before him, and that is to come after him. In the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 29, where he says that, the most important commandment is this, Here is Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. To the very concept that nothing in the heavens above, the earth beneath, or the water beneath the earth will ever resemble this God, echoed in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 3 to 5, and confirmed by Jesus, peace be upon him, as he stands before his followers, the Pharisees and his disciples, and he says that, You've never heard the voice of God, neither have you ever seen his shame. In the book of John, chapter 5, verse 37, it was as if I've been reading a new revelation. As all these truths came to me and inspired within me the ability to wholeheartedly make my kalima and say that La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah that there is no God worthy of worship except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Muhammad peace be upon him is his messenger.